Hello, I'm Charlotte Smith for Oceans Inc. outside the European Parliament building in Brussels. MEPs have been busy here of late considering reforms to the common fisheries policy, but there's another issue due for review by the EU concerning our use of the ocean happening later this year, and that's the rules governing our fishing of the deep sea. There's a special hearing happening here today which is likely to set the tone for what happens down the track. The European Union has the biggest deep sea fishing fleet in the world, capable of fishing to a depth of 1.5 kilometers below the surface for species such as round-nosed grenadier and black scabbard fish. The EU fleet is accounting for 75% of all the catch taken in, for example, the Northeast Atlantic. So what the EU does has great influence globally. Deep sea bottom trawling uses nets sometimes the size of a football pitch. It's a fishing method decried by conservationists who say it wreaks huge destruction on corals which take thousands of years to grow and other habitats, that it takes unacceptable levels of bycatch, that is non-target species, and that it harvests some of the longest living and slowest reproducing species in the ocean, some of which live to 150 years. The marine equivalent, campaigners say, of cutting down an ancient forest to catch birds. The exploding demand for fish and advances in technology mean boats are fishing deeper and farther out than ever before. Scientists warn that the damage and implications for ocean health as a whole are grave. Matthew Gianni is an expert in this type of fishing for the Deep Sea Conservation Coalition and he is clear what the EU has to do. Number one phase out destructive bottom fishing practices, deep sea fishing practices, such as bottom trawl fishing and bottom gillnet fishing. Number two, ensure that all deep sea fishing is subject to a prior environmental impact assessment. In other words, try to find out what is likely to happen before you allow the fishery to go ahead so you can regulate it properly. Number three, the regulation needs to ensure that the catch of all deep sea species is effectively managed. Right now, today, only a handful of the many dozens of species that are caught in the deep sea fisheries in the European Union and in the Northeast Atlantic are actually subject to catch limitations. For the rest, it's pretty much a free-for-all. And then finally, number four, there need to be protective measures in place for the most vulnerable species. For example, there are endangered species of deep sea sharks in the Northeast Atlantic. And not only do, does the regulation need to uh, prevent the, 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 the sale and the landing of these fish, but actually even the bycatch to begin with to ensure that these species don't go extinct. At a specially convened public hearing in Parliament today, MEPs will be listening to the views of scientists and fisheries experts on the problems with the current regime. The political view at this point seems to be that there is good hope for change. There is a formidable élan, you have reason, with the vote of euh, euh, the PCP. Et je n'imagine pas un instant euh, qu'avec la pêche en eau profonde, nous n'allions pas dans la même direction. Ce qui est très important avec ce texte, c'est de protéger la faune en grande profondeur et également la qualité de la biodiversité en grande profondeur. It's extremely important that the European Union takes action in the deep seas because we have overfished so many species in the oceans and we shouldn't make the same mistake a second time in the deep sea. And we do know so little about the deep sea. They might be crucial for the marine life in general and that's why I find it extremely important that we are very active in this field. We really have to fight for applying the precautionary principle also on the deep seas and be very, very careful in what we're doing down there. When we are speaking about deep seas, we, A, we don't know very, very much about it. Uh, down there we are handling an environment which is very, very vulnerable. So whatever we do there, we can do it in, in two seconds and we're going to try to repair it for the next 10 or 20 or 30 years. We shouldn't do that. The deep sea is the most vulnerable environment we have on the globe and we know so little about it. And it's such a wonderful world when you look at films and you see pictures from down where, there. It's such a fantastic world and it is so easy to destroy and we are on the best way to do so. This legislation is about an opportunity, it's about the future. If 
the legislation shifts deep sea fishing to more environmentally friendly, sustainable practices, then you have better long-term security for the, the workers in the fishery, you've got a better product, uh, you've got less fuel consumption, uh, good for climate change and definitely good for the bottom line of the fishing fleets, and ultimately better long-term access to the marketplace. The marketplace is increasingly demanding environmentally friendly, sustainable fisheries products. So we see this as a way forward, fishing for the future instead of stuck in the past. The Committee on Fisheries public hearing on deep sea fishing underway today at the EU Parliament is just the first step in a process which will see MEPs voting on reforms in June. Oceans Inc. will report on progress along the road.